So, interesting. Anyways, after that's done, after that's done, now that person has secured legitimacy, a political mandate, and becomes the leader of that particular country. So look, the, the point is this. Uh, what I'm trying to say to you is that the Islamic model is very sophisticated. I would argue it's very advanced and effective. And had it not been, it wouldn't have been able to take over so much part of the world or whatever. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But I have one more, literally, one more question for you. Yeah. Um, with hadith, right? Yes. So you need to contextualize your place with hadith. However, there's fabrications in hadith, and you can find some really ridiculous hadith. Like yeah. if you eat an apple, you know, like, I don't know, like yeah. crazy. Yeah. I've, I've, I've read that one here. Go um, on. <laughs> so uh, some hadiths just seem like they were made up to prove a point or to, you know? Yeah. So how can you contextualize your faith with that which is fabricated? How, how is someone like me, not like you, can look through and be like, yeah, this hadith is, is accurate, you know? Well, I mean, there's, there are conditions for the acceptance of hadith, right? So the conditions that are for the acceptance of hadith are things like the hadith has to be in line with the Quranic narrative. It has to have sahih, it has to be, the sanad has to be sahih. Even if the sanad of the hadith is not sahih, sometimes it can be rejected. So sometimes if it's even the hadith is sanad is strong, it can be rejected if it contradicts the Quran or other hadith. So that means if, it can contradict, if it's, um, you know, you look at the narrators or... Yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah. If you find that and it's contradicted to the Quran, yeah. then how do you know other stuff that have the correct narrative? So a lot of the scholars will come and look at that and see if there's any way through Usul, which is a whole system, that they can they can con con conciliate between them. If not, then they would reject the hadith. And that's been done in Sahih Muslim, by the way. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, which talks about uh, uh, Adam being created on Friday. Uh, have you have you no, put your hands up if you heard the hadith? All right, the hadith is uh, it has a Sahih. It's chain, but it's rejected by Bukhari even. Why? Because it goes against uh, the ayat of the Quran. Would you, would you say that's uh, fabricated hadith? Or no, I just say that according to the muhaddithin, according to the muhaddithin, they say that this hadith is called hadith al-turab. Some refer to it as that. It's in Sahih Muslim. Because Adam was created from uh, dirt on Friday, yeah? So, I'm not saying that there's not hadith. I'm not sure if there's another hadith that says he was created on Friday. But I'm talking about this particular one, Sahih Muslim. Monday, Tuesday, that's, that's something we've constructed. Yeah, yeah, so this... So, of course, that's very... Well, I mean, no, but... Do you know what the, I mean? In Arabic, the word for Yawm al-Thnayn is like literally the second day. Yawm al-Ahad means the first day. Yawm al-Thnayn means the second day. Yawm al uh, means the third day. Yeah. That's all it means. It's not, it's not like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which in English, by the way, do you know where they come from? Do you know where Monday comes from? Do you know? Do you know the Anglo-Saxons had gods, right? So in English, the word Wednesday, uh, like Thursday comes from, I think, th like one of the Anglo-Saxon gods. So each of the days, anyways, so Monday, the English lexical Monday, Tuesday is different to in Arabic, Yom al Ahad, Yom al Thnayn, Yom al Thnayn, Yom al Arba'ah, etc. Which literally means the first day, second day, third day, fourth day. So it was not a problem. We don't assume that in, uh, uh, untethered individualism is the be all and end all. We don't believe that. That's not our belief. So that's not our presupposition. Do you know, the question is this. When you deal with someone, you have to deal with them as per the presuppositions of whatever they believe in is. If you deal with a feminist, you say, okay, you believe in equality, but how comes you're not being equal here? If you deal with a liberal, you say, you believe in liberalism, but you're not being liberal here. But if you deal with a Muslim, you say, you believe in submission to God, but how comes you're not being Muslim here? But there that, is people define, like within feminism, there is sects. Within liberalism, there is yeah, sects. Yeah. You're never going to find someone people agree, you know? What I'm trying to say to you is that you're using liberal, stretchy liberal ideas to, to measure Islamic theological precepts. And I'm saying, if you can't even prove those to be objective, then there's no use you measuring it with the Islamic thesis. Because the Islamic thesis is in no need to be measured by a, a, by a subjective morality of a white man who's forcing it, had forced it for 400 years, and continues to force it down our throats today. We don't need the white man to force us. Okay, you know the serial of the prophet? Yes. There's fabrications in that as well, right? Yeah. So how do you... There's fabrications, uh, uh, there's fabrications in the hadith and fabrications in the seerah. Yes. But not in the Quran. Not in the Quran. I've seen it before when uh, you were saying that different hadiths can be falsified based on their, the, the narrators. Yes, yes. How, how can you tell if those references haven't been made up, made up and falsified? Well, well, I mean, they, they have a whole, uh, they have a whole system of doing that, right? And there are conditions for hadith to be accepted. So, for example, the narrators have to have, they have to be thicker. They have to, they have to have 
uh, they have to be people trustworthy. They have to have good health dubbed. How, how do you know that someone's just sort of written that, wrote his name down on this page and said this, this was from this person? Yeah, so the, 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 there would be some kind of, look at where he lived and who saw him and who met, met him. You mean look at who lives, can you find, can you historically track? Historically, Pardon? I say this historically because even if you have historical information, it doesn't mean it's accurate. The Romans, for example, they rewrote their history. Yeah, yeah, so we would look, we would uh, cross-reference biographies with biographies, so you have... It's just paper, or, you know, it's been written down, so it's, yeah. it's subject to be changed. Yeah, but then you have the, what, the, the question, yeah, look, I, I there's all, look, with, how do you know King Henry VIII lived? How do you know that? You don't know that. No, no, you do know that. But how do you know that? I mean, there's anyone, if we were to deliver a history class today about King Henry VIII in any British university, is the person going to, is the academic going to come up and say, well, you know, guys, we don't really know that King Henry VIII lived. Academic, there are, for example, there are books, academic books that are not necessarily correct. Yeah, I understand. But how do we know anyone lived? How do you know? How do you know? That's the point. You don't. How do you know the Holocaust happened? Okay. That could be staged. I'm, I'm not saying it is. <laughs> but you don't actually know. You only know that which you can empirically like test. You know. And even All right. Uh, well, okay. Have the same. Tr uh, if you if you have that belief, then you don't believe in any science. Most of the things you believe in is based on testimony. Of course. All yeah. right. So you believe in science because of testimony. You you haven't gone to. Believe in science. Well, you believe it. Like if you go to you go to the doctors. Yeah. All right. If you're ill, you go to the doctors. They give you a prescription which is based on scientific method. Now, that have you have you carried out those scientific no. things? Okay, but how do you know? You trust on the person who told you, the doctor, who trusts scientists. So you trust those, those biographies? And yes, yes, we trust it as as history, the same way that people would trust. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's history. It's really a question for yeah. information. I wasn't quite. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. So it's the same thing. It's just like testimony. We believe is 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 an effective way of knowing something. You know what I'm so. Obviously, I'm coming here to ask you your testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But is there any other questions? Do you get, do you get what I'm saying here? What I think you guys have to do. And I, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, what is, I never used to know this. Obviously, I met some sisters and they say that the niqab is actually far. Yes. Like, I haven't, no matter how much information I read, I will never be able to attain everything to fully conclude. Do you know what I mean? My lifespan won't allow that, I believe. Um, so, what is... The position on that. I don't know. My position, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was, I would say, at very, at very. Be at you have, you have two main opinions within the Islamic discourse. One that is fart, and one that is mustahab. Some, say, some say that it doesn't exist in Islam. There are lies. Mustahab is like sunnah. It's, it's not fart. Some. Well, no, some. Okay. The, so sun the word sunnah. Could mean something which is far sometimes, and could mean something which is masnuna, manduba, yeah, mustahabba, which are basically things which preferred. Yes. You get it. So some say that the majority, I would say probably don't say that it's far. The vast majority don't say that it's far. But it doesn't mean just because the majority says something. Yes. No. 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 Like the school of thought, the Hanbali school of thought. They they see a lot of scholars. They do say that it's far. Because yeah. my sister's looking into Salafism and it's yeah, cute, like, yeah. cool, you know, but yeah. do you align yourself with any sect within Islam? Or do you follow the well, school of thought? Or do you just say innocently, I'm just a Muslim? No, I don't, I, well, it's, it's, not, it's not as easy as that. I think people that watch my videos know that I definitely associate with Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, right? Yeah, In Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, I was kind of, I've got more of a learning, like I was taught the Hanbali way, yeah, the Hanbali school of thought. But, um, so I am more in that way, like I'm more, if I don't know anything, I just look at what the Madhab says from that perspective, to be honest with you. So the, yeah, so the Hanbali school of thought, most, most of my fiqh information comes from that. So um, which site would you, recommend, uh, would you recommend to get honest information, because there's a lot of anti-Islamic sites. What, what website? Yeah. Uh, do you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what is up with the fact 
fatwas? Why do people need to make a fatwa? Like, we know something is illegal. Like, why do you need to make a fatwa to stop people from smoking cigarettes? Do you know what I mean? Like, is a fatwa... What is the fatwa? Did it exist at the time of the Quran? Yeah, fatwa. In the Quran, you have to ask for a In the Quran, they, they, ask you, they ask you for a fatwa on women. Uh, uh, oh, you're right, you're good, yeah? yeah there's lots of um, fatwas. But the, the point is this. A fatwa is when you're trying to... Because there's two things. There's, there's taqseel al-hukm and tanzeel al-hukm. Taqseel is when we, 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 we know what a hukm is, a ruling is, because it's mentioned in the Quran. As we said before, however, how that actually comes, how it actually uh, actualizes, right, and materializes in the domain, is where the fatwa comes in. So, someone to be a, uh, to make a fatwa has to be a mufti, or let's say a mujtahid, or someone who's able to do that. So that's why they look at the situation and say, okay, well, let's let's look at the Islamic corpus and see what's most appropriate for that particular situation. Is that it? Yeah. So, um, what I would advise, we live in a world today, yeah, wallahi, let me tell you something. I just want to really hammer this point home. We live in a post World War II new world today, right? Where because the Allies had won the war, they were able to build infrastructures and spread their ideologies in a way that was not possible before, okay? It was possible in the colonial period, but it wasn't possible in the interwar period. After 94, you could say 1994, the situation became even more intense because the Cold War ended and the only ideological um, military power, which was the Soviet Union, had collapsed. We live in that context, which means we live in a dangerous world where you think you live where there is a monopoly of ideas but you actually have the amplification of the Western post-colonial narrative and the suppression of the rest of the ideas. In that world, it's hard to take yourself out. It's hard to pull yourself out of the white man's shoes. We will continually... Can the same argument be made about an ignorant believer? Yeah. Because I, I've yes. seen some Muftis yes. say a woman shouldn't yes. sleep next to a wall yeah. because... Yes. No, that's ridiculous. Maybe. Did you see yes. Me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. The same argument could be made with religion. Yes. If someone is not critical, whether they be living in a post-colonial environment or whether they be a religious believer, and they don't want to ask questions which strike at the heart of their own faith, okay, and at the, the heart of their own existence, then they will invariably be overtaken by the currents of the new world. And I believe that this is a serious situation which could overtake us in the form of this global, this wave of globalization, right? Or this wave of American hegemony. I say this, I say that before asking, because the, the majority, I've, I've been doing this now a dawah for a while. I've noticed that the majority of questions that are put, um, about Islam relate to someone putting themselves in this 21st century white man's bubble, anachronistically looking back at the Prophet's life and trying to superimpose their own value judgments on this. And also at the same time, assumingly, false, falsely assuming that everything they believe is true and everything we believe is false. You can't start with that premise. Just because we live in your country, it doesn't mean we're going to believe everything you're going to believe. I, I get, and I'm not saying you guys are. No, no, I, I, but I that's, the, that's the message I want to put to them. Can be made about a Muslim country that someone left Ex Islam. Of course, of yeah, course, of course. Got no got doubt about it. Yes. But the, the, the point is this. Yeah. So I say this. I say this. If, you got, if, if, you, if whoever it is believes in liberalism, then the heart of liberalism is critical inquiry, if you think about it, right? So we have to inquire critically. Is liberalism itself, is democracy itself, is secularism, are these things worthy of being used as pseudo ultimate truths that we now have to measure everything to, uh, to, towards? Or are these things, as we've discussed and shown, practically, when, when actually uh, operational, not able to actualize themselves in a full sense? And if that is the case, then to what extent are they effective? 
And if they're not effective completely, then we know that they're not perfect. And if we know they're not perfect, then how can we measure in how can we measure what claims to be perfection with that which we know for sure is imperfection? So next time we ask a question. Are you saying in order for something to be true, it has to be effective? Sometimes, yes. Okay. I mean, it's the Quran says don't drink. There's Muslims who drink. Yes, no. What I mean is that the, the ruling of not, not drinking is effective to one's spiritual and physical. Do you get it? All right, so the point is this. Do you ever get that? Like, no, alhamdulillah. Did now, you used to? maybe when I was younger, when I was younger, a little critically and stuff, you always doubt. But when there came a time where re literally I believe that Allah, uh, I believe, Allah gave me a very strong sense of yaqeen. Very strong you sense. Keep yourself not which means certainty. How, how do you keep right, like, how do I ground myself? Yeah, how do you know that what you're thinking is true or not? Like, because it, it makes it makes sense to every. Yeah, well, in the way that um, to truly take on another perspective, to challenge. Yeah, I get that. Do you know? Because Islam has a way of proving itself, right? It has a falsification test. It has an inimitability test. It it has evidences that aims to prove its reality. Its core message, which is the message of Tawheed of believing in one God and worshipping one God is, is a message which I believe not only appeals to my logical state of being but also uh, appeals to my existential um, spiritualism and I believe that from all of those perspectives Islam is, is no doubt the most effective um, um, the most plausible and, and, the most, uh, and the most rational recourse for me do you get what I'm saying? so I've come to that conclusion Well, I have, and, and that's and why you know I've studied this. Yeah, so I've looked at these things. Do that, would you, in fact, have to step aside from your own perspective? And Not really. You can never do that. I really know. You, you can never feel... like actually step step out. And yeah, you don't. Like, some and people I assume. And tell me, yes. Um, you just have to put all the ideologies on the table right. and analyze those ideologies. But what ideology are you using to analyze those ideologies? Exactly. So, like, it's. No, that's that's a good point. Do you truly think then you can see something from someone else's perspective? Yeah, no, no. I can't. I, I cannot employ a completely I empathetic approach. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't employ a completely empathetic approach. But what we can do in a, in a free market of ideas is compare things on the value or the merit of rationalism. So say, okay, the idea of atheism, for example, does it? How does it compare to theism? The th the fact that something. Theism that God, God's existence. So what, what makes more sense that there's something that created the universe or something that doesn't? For example, that the universe is sustained without a sustainer. It's not what makes sense, it's what's more probable. Yeah, what's more probable, what is more um, rational, what's a better recall. So for me, If you're the an more atheist, you will understand religion. If you were born and you were brought up an atheist, I think it's very common. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes it can be. That's why it's, atheists have because to be it honest. It seems so alien to you, like, the, you know, the prophet flew, you know, like, it seems like... A fairy tale story, doesn't yeah. it? Like Santa Claus. Well, I mean, do you know what else is a fairy tale story? If you think about it. Yeah. Today's technology is yesterday's magic. Let me tell you something. This is what, what people think of today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, as you know, it's real ironic. A lot of people are saying that, you know, look at these stories of yesterday. It's a man flying into the heaven and this has happening and this or that. And look at these, and a man splitting the sea and all these things. Look at this magic. Look at this it's an illusionary tale. Look at this fairy tale. I, I, the ironic part of it is this, retrospectively we know that we have things today that had we been able to go on a time machine and go back to yesterday with, people would think is magic. Because how the hell would you explain to a medieval peasant the functionality of an iPhone? Well, coming back to this That's book. magic for him. If he sees an iPhone, he'll think, what the hell is this? But, but right? Makes a point about the book, about Do you get what I'm saying? But the point is this I'm making is that this is, a, is, this is an argument from ignorance. This is an argument from ignorance because just because I cannot conceive of the reality of something, it doesn't mean that thing doesn't exist. Now, if I go back to the medieval period with my phone and I show the peasant, this is an iPhone, okay? I can speak to him for a long time. Now, think about this. I go back to the medieval time period and I say this as a machine, as a piece of metal that we put onto our ears and that actually it has m movies on it. You can see human beings on it. 
You can talk to someone across the world with it. You know, it's, it's, it's got a camera on it. You can take pictures and videos. You can capture this. You're speaking to a peasant. Or you tell them that this, this machine that you go on and you, you're gliding around and, 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 and these things. Yes? How, what are they going to think of that? They're going to think, okay, what are you talking about? I, I, I can't even imagine what you're talking about. But how do we know that exists? Because we've experienced it. It's, it's, for us, it's experiential, right? Now, in the same way as that we haven't experienced their past and they haven't experienced our present, it doesn't mean that either of those things don't exist. So if someone says, I don't believe in religion, because look at those stories of the ancient, as it says in the Quran, Asatir al awwalin that they say that this is the old the ancient tales. In fact, some of the, and you were talking about apostasy, there was one person called, he's a, he's a, a poet called Abu al-Ala al-Ma'arri, who was an Abbasid poet, who didn't believe in God, who was an apostate from Islam. But they left him to do poetry, by the way. They left him, they, he was doing poetry, and one of his famous lines was, al hayatu uh, al ta'ab, that the whole of life is tired, being tired. Anyways, if you ask those individuals, about our technological reality today, they will say, what the hell is this, right? They will say, what is it, what are you talking about? I can't, even, I can't even imagine what you're talking about. It's kind of like that thing with the hadith in the book, it had everyone's names in it. Yeah, right, exactly. So we look at certain things in the Quranic discourse, in the, in the hadith discourse, and we can't, even, we can't even imagine how could a man split water. Who cares if we can't imagine it? Who cares if they can't imagine it? Does that mean it doesn't exist? You see what I mean? And by the way, for the, for the record, there was a hadith of the Prophet. He said that there's going to come a time where people will glide around in machines and this and that and it's going to have interiors made of uh, leather and these things. Oh, yeah. Can the hadith be carbon dated? Can you go yes. back and see and they exactly are And they are carbon dated. For example, well, how do you know? well they have been carbon dated. Like for example, the, the, Quran, has, the Quran has been carbon dated. The, the, yeah, no, I know that, but I'm saying about hadith. That some of the manuscripts have been carbon dated. Some of them are written, right? So that some of them have been carbon dated. Same thing as that the Quran has been, the Sana'a manuscripts has been carbon dated 632 or 652. Uh, uh, so that's been carbon dated. I think I forgot her name. One of the women there, she shouts a lot. I was watching her. Yeah, her. Yeah. She, she wears glasses. Yes. She mentioned in one of the videos that they don't put the dates of the carbon dated. Is that true? Like, well, I don't know. I haven't seen all of all the hadith. I know that the, the, there are lots of hadith that have been written, right? And that we have not only a chain backwards to them, yeah. but some of them have been carbon dated. But I don't know how many of them have been carbon dated. And that's, uh, I have to go and do my research on you that. Should. <laughs> okay, Jazakum okay. so I've got so many uh, microphones on me. Thank but you yeah, so anytime. Okay, Salaam Alaikum, guys.